tonight, shoplifting, the battle on the high street. They'll come in with a wheelie bin and they'll take out the entire meat section. They are brazen because they believe there is no risk to the reward that they can get because there's no police response. He's literally just put it in his pocket, hasn't he? Yeah. The extreme lengths brazen thieves are going to. I've had occasions where like, we've told them we're phoning the police and that little response will be, well, they're not going to do anything, so I'll crack on. What's the impact on shops and those who work there? We've had a couple of people resign earlier this year because of intimidation by shoplifters who've been caught. And is enough being done to stop it? That kind of behaviour is completely unacceptable, and what I want to see from the police is a zero-tolerance approach. Good evening and welcome to the Tonight programme. We're in the midst of what's being described as a shoplifting epidemic. Last year, thefts estimated to have cost UK retailers nearly £1 billion, adding yet more pressure to rising prices. But apart from the strain on our wallets, what are the other costs of this shoplifting boom? And what's being done to tackle the problem? I've been finding out. For Benedict, running this convenience shop in South London for the past eight years was supposed to provide him with financial security. If the cashiers feel under threat, they'll press the panic button and the whole shop will fill up with smoke. Now he spends more and more of his time worrying about security of a different kind, tackling shoplifting. When we first arrived here, uh, we would have between three to five shoplifting incidences a week. Um, we're now facing three up to nine, ten a day. The sheer level of theft threatens to steal Benedict's whole business from him. We've had a couple of people resign earlier this year because of intimidation by shoplifters who've been caught. We're losing hundreds of pounds a day. Over the week, it will reach over a thousand pounds. Even as Benedict is halfway through his interview with tonight. He has to break off to deal with what he thinks might be a shoplifter. Incidents like this, though, are nothing new for Benedict and his staff. His CCTV has captured countless examples of theft. I feel like shoplifting has almost been decriminalised because if you was to call the police, 80% of the time you will not get a police response. Benedict's story is part of a national one, a surge in shoplifting that threatens the very basics of doing business. Research by the British Retail Consortium found that shoplifting has nearly doubled since 2019. Data on shoplifting has always been a problem, so shop workers say that they simply don't have the time to report every single incident that happens. It's just simply too high volume. Whilst police recorded crimes suggest that there's just 340,000 incidents of shop theft last year, the British Retail Consortium suggests this is closer to 8 million. I would argue that that is still the tip of the iceberg. The headlines in traditional media and videos on social media are awash with shoplifting, with shop staff reporting ever more cases of theft and ever more brazen methods of doing it. Do you think generally shoplifting is a problem? Is this yes. something you worry about? I know the police in our city struggle. Um, they have quite a bit of uh, other things to deal with. You work in a shop. Do you think shoplifting is a problem for everyone at the moment? I feel like people see things and because of the price has gone up then they just think well i'm never going to be able to get it so i may as well take it if there's no one around watching me the other day i saw one lady came out from mark spencer she pretended to be pregnant full of steaks full of meat steaks yes and the rise in shoplifting doesn't seem to be slowing for example, between January and June of this year, the co-op recorded its highest ever levels of shoplifting and antisocial behaviour. It happened more than a thousand times every single day. 
So yeah, the things they're going for me. I've come to meet Paul Gerrard. He featured in an episode of Tonight on Shoplifting last year. The police response has degraded. Two times out of every three that my co-op colleagues have asked for help from the police, the police haven't appeared and supported them. So, has anything changed since then? We are deeply worried. We're worried for our colleagues who are facing abuse, violence. They'll come in with a wheelie bin. A wheelie bin? A wheelie bin, and they'll look at all the meat section and take out the entire meat section. They are brazen because they believe there is no risk to the reward that they can get because there's no police response. Shoplifting cost the co-op £33 million in the first half of 2023. What kind of impact is this having on your staff? It's hugely demoralising for my colleagues. And these are the people that were heroes during the pandemic. They deserve better than this. The co-op were the only major supermarket willing to go on the record to discuss shoplifting with tonight. And they've given us access to a branch in Manchester city centre. As well as CCTV and a security guard, store manager Callum is showing me some of the measures they're putting in place to try and tackle theft here. If you just look here, this is one of our newest measures that we've gone to. We call these dummy boxes. As you will see here, we have mm -hmm. a lot of our stuff in product protection. What's this? Dishwasher tablets? Yeah. And laundry detergent. To see for myself what Callum and his colleagues are up against, he's invited me to spend an hour watching their CCTV on a normal weekday morning. And we've barely begun filming when we spot our first shoplifter. So we've got a male who's just... He's literally just put it in his pocket, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's put it in his pocket. And there he is walking out. We've literally just sat down to yeah. look at the cameras and within... A minute? Yeah, a minute or two minutes, somebody's coming We've in seen store, someone stealing. The thief we spotted stuffed cans of beer into his sleeves, adding some chocolate before quickly leaving. It's a moment for me to witness, but a reality for Callum every single day. I've kind of built like a thick skin about it because I've got so used to it. Obviously, you've got the security guard, but is there anything so, that you can do as a store manager? I tend to just stand around and try and watch them to keep an eye on what's going on. If someone's there, it kind of prevents it, but if it's just a prolific offender who's done it numerous times, they'll just continue to if you're there or not. As a business, our policy is we don't confront them, so we give good customer service, so we'll offer them a basket to try and make them feel a bit uncomfortable. But their policy of not confronting the shoplifters is for a sensible reason. I've been fed with needles on numerous occasions. Um, I've had colleagues who have had bottles through that. Um... If shop staff can't stop them, then what about the police? I've had occasions where like, we've told them we're phoning the police and their literal response will be, well, they're not going to do anything, so I'll crack on. To show what Callum and other shop staff go through on a day-to-day -day basis, the co-op have allowed us unique access to a video diary he'll record over the course of a week. So today's Thursday. I was woken up this morning at 2am due to a break-in that occurred at my store last night. It's still Thursday and we've had three incidents this morning already. Sadly, Callum's experiences aren't the extreme. Staff and retailers are reporting that shoplifters are increasingly using violence and verbal abuse. There's no doubt that this has got worse in recent years, particularly the willingness to use violence, aggression and weapons targeted towards shop workers. The British Retail Consortium recorded that more than 850 shop workers were subjected to violence or abuse every single day between 2021 and 2022. Encountering a shoplifter is the number one trigger for violence in a retail environment. And this is having huge consequences for our hard-working shop workers. Dominique Woodward has run a perfume shop in Malvern for the past 14 years. As a small, independent retailer, Dominique has a different approach to shoplifters than some of the bigger chains. I will always take that item off of them and I will march them out and tell them never to enter our shop again. And earlier this year, she tried to do just that. Two guys, probably in their 20s, came into the shop and I greeted them as I'd greet anyone. 
And then this bag from Mail One just appeared out from underneath his shirt, and he just went forward and and all these items straight into a bag. So I ran for the door, kind of put myself in a very much like a rugby position. The first guy here who'd been kind of grabbing the items tried to dodge around me and he ran out the door. The guy with the bag, he just obviously thought, this isn't worth it. And he let go of the bag and he ran past me. This was the first of two occasions when Dominique had to march thieves out of her shop this year and she'd do the same again. If they get away with it once and then they get away with it easily, they will come back. And my body is kind of more prepared for the idea that I could get hurt. These shoplifters have not been identified. In our episode last year, we reported on a policy from 2014, which meant police would only prosecute theft that was valued at more than £200. But some criminals have told me that this sent a signal to them that they could basically steal with relative impunity, so long as they kept the value each time to just under £200. The Home Office reviewed this act in 2019 after complaints from retailers, and the policing minister at the time wrote to forces to say they should prosecute thefts under £200. But Dominique feels that shoplifters still believe they won't face any legal consequences. They know now that if they're stealing under £200, they're not going to be prosecuted at all. Katie Bourne is the Sussex Police and Crime Commissioner and the Police and Crime Commissioner's lead for retail crime. There has been a myth going around that the police will only arrest um, if the goods that are stolen are more than £250. That is actually not true. Um, and uh, no police forces will tell you that, that that's the case. Leeds is one area that seems to have seen a particularly sharp rise in shoplifting. With more than 2,000 crimes recorded in the city centre last year, it's been called the shoplifting capital of Britain. Niall works in a one-stop shop. I'm standing here on Tuesday night and just finishing mopping up and a guy came in through the door. He was dressed in black, it didn't look right before he'd even said anything. What immediately drew Niall's attention was what was in the man's hand. I was aware that he had a gun in his hand then. He shouted over at my colleague behind the till, give me the money, I've got a gun. With his colleague understandably terrified, Niall decided to try and get the man out of the shop despite the risk. So I grabbed him from behind, tried to pull him over. That didn't really work. And then we were having a bit of a tussle back to the door. He hit me a few times with the gun. Got my hands on his wrist to hold the gun down. He punched me and said, if you let me go, I won't shoot. And at that point, I thought, right, let him go. While struggling with the man, Niall was hit over the head with a beer bottle as well as the gun multiple times. Marlon Stewart was later caught and is currently behind bars, having committed 13 crimes in around 20 minutes before the incident with Niall. His weapon was later discovered to be an air gun. back in Manchester, and it seems that the number of shoplifting incidents Callum is having to deal with are never-ending. Um, after a man has come in, attempted to steal coffee, he's been challenged and he's threatened both the guard and the member of staff that was on shift with a knife. It's still Monday and we have now just had two women come in the store and rob laundry and detergent. Over the week, Callum's branch spotted 24 shoplifting incidents. So why is shoplifting soaring, accompanied by so much violent and antisocial behaviour? There's really been a perfect storm. We've had a reduction in the police resource over the past decade. The numbers of police haven't kept up with population growth, and so we know that the police forces are overstretched and under-resourced. The cost of living crisis has also meant people are resorting to stealing. 
but for others, they shoplift not because of desperation, but because they feel they can get away with it or that the rules simply don't apply to them. I'm meeting Jack, which isn't his real name. He's an ex-shoplifter who started stealing when he began university. Unsurprisingly, he wants to remain anonymous. How did you end up starting shoplifting? I just kind of did it because everyone did it. And I didn't really care about the consequences because you don't think there are any. So everyone's getting away with it. Jack would steal groceries from one of the big supermarkets, which he felt wouldn't make a difference to such a major company. You don't think you're going to get caught? The amount of times you hear people that don't get caught, you never think you're going to be the one that gets caught. But Jack did get caught. As I was leaving, they kind of tapped me on the shoulder, said, right, we've just seen you steal that. Could you come with us, please? Took me down to their back offices. Uh, well, there are three police officers waiting, and that was scary. At that point, I was like, oh, you know, I have messed up. Jack was told that if he was spotted in one of the shop stores again, he'd be arrested. He hasn't shoplifted since. There are families in Britain really struggling with the cost of living right now. Did you ever consider that stealing products pushes up the price of those products for everyone else? It was just, I didn't care. I literally just didn't care about the consequences. I could get away with it. So with thieves feeling they can get away with it, and many retailers feeling as though they can no longer cope with it, are the police doing enough to tackle the problem? The police don't arrest everybody caught shoplifting because it depends on the individual circumstances. Arresting a young person is, is not the right way to do it. You want to teach them that what they've done is wrong and you want to make them understand that. One of the ways they're planning to fight shoplifting is through Project Pegasus, which the UK's top 10 retailers are helping to fund. They've agreed that they're going to support policing for the next few years to stand up a team within policing to share data and intelligence. But despite police policy, some retailers are feeling the need to take matters into their own hands and are looking for other solutions. David McKelvey is the CEO of TMI. Made up largely of former police officers, the company offers a private service retailers can employ to potentially arrest shoplifters, and demand has risen dramatically in the past year. We work with the retailers, with the, the, the actual people at the coalface, those in the shops, the managers, the staff. They will identify shoplifters literally as they, are, they, they commit offences. Do not move. Do not move. Right. David's team will then potentially make a citizen's arrest. We will detain them and we will usually take them back to the shop where we'll sit down, gather the evidence, look at the CCTV, look, you know, find out if they've got the goods on them. So we build a criminal case there and then at that time, providing we get a name and address, then we will, they'll, they'll, they're released and we will then later bring a criminal summons. And we prosecute in the courts as a private prosecutor. Do not try anything. The company has prosecuted right. 300 shoplifters since 2015. Earlier this year, a video of them detaining a group of men suspected of stealing from a supermarket in Essex went viral. Stop resisting! What's my Stop resisting! If you're going to tie a policeman up for hours and hours and hours dealing with a shoplifter with £50 worth of stuff, that's not a sensible use of resources. Some shops are increasingly turning to technology to fight theft. Mm -hmm. Daniel Sharib runs a service station in Surrey. He's installed a system called FaceWatch. Over the last year or so, we've spent almost £10,000 on loss prevention systems. That includes FaceWatch. CCTV cameras in the store use facial recognition technology. Shop workers report suspected shoplifters on the FaceWatch system, and if anyone on that database enters a store, it identifies their face and triggers an alert on the app. Right. The stand-in shoplifter this time is FaceWatch CEO Simon Gordon. The alerts just come through on the phone as I walked in, so they can see the original face 
that was uh, enrolled, and then my face as I just walked in. Just under 600 stalls around the country are currently using FaceWatch, but it is controversial as critics say it breaches data protection laws. We've taken every precaution to make sure we protect privacy. We don't give any information to the police. Um, basically, all that happens is, is that we, when somebody's reported on our system, we keep the face for one year on there, and then after a year, it's deleted. Earlier this year, 50 MPs and peers backed a letter by privacy campaign groups to ban live facial recognition technology like FaceWatch. What's really important, I think, though, is that it's, it's used responsibly. Nothing happens if you're on the system and an alert comes other than you're not going to be allowed to steal from that store. Stores can take their own measures, but ultimately it's the government which has the power to decide policy and stop shoplifting. Chris Philp is the Minister for Crime, Policing and Fire. Does your government have shoplifting under control? Well, I think there is uh, a lot more uh, we need to do in this area. That's why we're developing this action plan with police to really clamp down on this. What I want to is see it under control at the moment. I think there is more we need to do on shoplifting. We're I talking do about want... gangs going into yeah. shops and literally clearing the shelves, people taking wheelie bins in to fill up with goods. That's out of control. Yeah, uh, I, that kind of behaviour is completely unacceptable. And what I want to see from the police is a zero tolerance approach to that kind of behaviour. The reality is the cost of living crisis has pushed more people into poverty and police forces are too stretched to do very much about it. You've created the perfect environment here for shoplifting to rise. Well, I don't government. accept that, actually. So we've got record numbers of police officers in England and Wales. Talking to retailers, they don't think this is relating to the cost of living. Uh, it is organised gangs, it's people feeding drug habits uh, and it's not acceptable. Chris Philp also hit the headlines recently when he pointed out that the public have the power to make a citizen's arrest if they see a shoplifter. That sounds like quite a desperate measure for people to have to carry out a citizen's arrest. Uh, well, look, I think I was talking about um, store security staff, uh, but I think you know all members of the public, uh, including store security staff, uh, you know, sh should be aware of the power that they uh, that they have. Um, but it, obviously, it's up to you know, the police to investigate all. Uh, shoplifting offences where there is evidence to follow up. The shopkeepers that we've spoken to say that the reason why shoplifting has gone up so much is because people think that they're not going to be punished. Well, using CCTV evidence, using facial recognition, using a mu an increased police response, you know, that will change. For shop workers like Callum, Benedict, Daniel, Dominique and Niall, that change needs to happen soon as they spend time, energy and money on security through fear for the future of their businesses and their own safety. Yet last year, less than 15% of shoplifting offences resulted in a charge or summons. So the battle against shoplifting is one they might feel they're fighting on their own. That's it for tonight's programme. As always, you can continue the conversation using the hashtag ITVTonight on X or Twitter, as well as visiting our Facebook and Instagram pages and our website, itv.com forward slash tonight. Until next time, good evening and thank you for watching. Coming up next week, Ron K. Phillips meets Britain's young carers. I will always be there for that person, even if it does tear me apart.